Esteemed members and guests, ladies and gentlemen, firstly, allow me to thank you so very much for coming to this debate tonight. And if I may say so, it really is a pleasure. And having said that, I promise, that's the only line ChatGPT wrote. Now, despite what the proposition has tried to convince you of in those roughly 10 minutes, I'm here to tell you, I'm here to tell you that AI is not only not an existential threat, it is Robert, one of the greatest inventions mankind has ever made, one of the greatest, and not least because, not least because it can do your essays for you for free. Now, to make this case, we will try and demonstrate this through three clear points. Firstly, that AI offers us as a species such incredible benefits that, we sim that are just simply too good to pass up on. Moreover, that there are, as I have come to fear, slight misconceptions about what AI exactly is. It's not, as Sultan so colorfully described, you know, a Marvel villain Ultron, I think you said, you know, flying through the sky trying to kill Thor or Iron Man. Not, not always. And finally, that even if, even if you think it might someday in the future become an existential threat, just because it isn't existentially a threat to us now, we still take this debate. Now, before any of that, I have the duty and, if I may say so indeed, the pleasure to introduce the other side. So firstly, you just, ho you just heard from Sultan Kokar, our deputy director of press and a second year linguist. Um, now, Sultan is a very wonderful man, or so I would have said. And I, I was very glad you mentioned my Roman victory banner. And I, I was even more glad that it was of such good help to you in your own election for secretary's committee. Oh, wait, sorry, it wasn't. <laughs> Um, but no, moving on, I mean, Sultan is genuinely a lovely, lovely person, you know, clean, clean as a cat, one of the nicest people you'll ever, ever meet. Um, in fact, I have to admit, when I was looking for dirt on you, I had a really hard time. But what I shall say, if you'll permit me, is that for someone who, or so you say, goes to the gym so much, don't really see it, mate, no. <laughs> <laughs> moving on, moving on, you'll hear from, <laughs> sorry. You'll hear from Sylvan Bennett Shar, a default in law and one of our hardest working press and sponsorship officers, and if I may say so, quite a good friend. Now, Sylvan, you know, just like the AI he's agreed to besmirch, he has this remarkable ability to, in this most efficient way, just flick from seemingly dauntless task to seemingly dauntless task, uh, be that, um, and I quote from him, uh, helping his uncle see a German auction house to trying to convince Huntsman Savile Row to repaint one of our rooms in the color of tweed. They said no, I'm so told. However, what I think really characterizes Sultan is, shall we say, his two great obsessions in life, um, those being the following two individuals. One is the Kaiser, uh, for whom he's promised to wear a pickle halba, and I was very disappointed not to see you in one tonight. The other is a woman um, by the name of Aida, you tell me you, is how you pronounce it. Now, this is a woman for whom Sylvan quite literally organized an entire black tie offer evening with a champagne reception just so he could try and woo her. And while you listen to him debate and vote as you go out, it's my sincere hope that you won't lead him on just like she did. Now, after that, you'll hear from Professor Jean Tallinn, sorry, Jean Tallinn, the co-founding engineer of Skype and I would praise it, but I mean, come on, man. We all use Zoom anyway. <laughs> and finally, you'll hear from Professor Max Tegmark, a professor at MIT and the president of the Future of Life Institute, an organization created specifically to warn about AI. So in other words, he literally pays people to speak for his side. And you know, I, I had the pleasure of speaking to Professor Tegmark at dinner, and he, he's truly a brilliant man, really. And I would keep complimenting him if he weren't a vegan. So I'm told. Mm -hmm. Madam President, these are your speakers, and they are most welcome. <laughs> now, before I have any more fun, onto the actual speech. So, to, to my mind, I think, as I mentioned earlier, what's our what is our best argument to favor this, which is just all the benefits AI has for us and all it can do for us. So, these fine gentlemen, um, well, varying degrees of fine. Um, have tried to convince you that it's some you know, evil bugbear, it's some superhero villain you know, flying in the sky, it's going to destroy our lives, but I don't think they've quite appreciated, or 
not the experts, you know, far more than me, of course, um, just all it can do. I mean, first and foremost, if this weren't enough on its own, AI has the potential to completely revolutionize how we envisage and practice healthcare. I mean, take for example, you know, you can have a world in which you can have AI driving so quickly, so in such an advanced manner, the development of medical diagnostics and treatments, you know, treatments which will greatly improve our ability to well, live. Uh, beyond that, I mean, we can catch fatal diseases early. Just uh, imagine, uh, imagine a world where we have such commonplace AI systems that can analyze millions of patient records like, like that at the exact same time and then just treat it like there. In fact, down the line, if it gets advanced enough, you can have a scenario where you don't even have to come to the hospital, where the doctors can just get the system and, and diagnose your disease. I mean, who doesn't want to not go to the a and &E ever again? Um, moving beyond that, if that weren't enough, I mean, it's also just so massively beneficial to us economically. Um, you know, from sectors to mechanical, to agricultural, to, yes, for all the finance bros Tom is trying to recruit, you know, how do you think your job's gonna function in 20 years? And then, not only that, not only that, not only that but take, take what I think every single one of us here wants, a self-driving car. My friends, that is AI. Not only will that stop us crashing into each other, well, with my driving skills, maybe not me, but hopefully most of you, but that will make it so much more convenient and crucially, so much more safe of the world. And if that were not enough, if all of that was not enough, let's just take the example of climate change, which I think we can all agree it's a bit of an issue. Now, with AI, from how it can optimize our energy consumptions so we don't overheat the planet, or how it can literally, you know, through its programs, quite literally predict the natural disasters that will inevitably occur, we will save tons and tons of lives. I mean, how can that be an existential threat? And in fact, dare I say, if anything, at this point, there'll be a necessity. Now, it, indeed, it, it's as I mentioned earlier, it's such a big part of all of our lives already. I mean, it's not some existential bugbear we haven't heard of. I mean, I just ask, how many of you have had to suffer through Siri on your phone, AI? Or how many of us have spent hours, and in my case, literally hours, on the other side of some AI, you know, chat box customer service? Like, once again, my friends, that is AI. Or take Amazon, which I think is quite literally the one website we've probably all used. I mean, a lot of that runs by AI. I mean, you go on Amazon, you have your recommended. That's AI. Or take, maybe I'm projecting a bit too much, but take YouTube. YouTube recommended AI. And I can say, at least in my case, I've spent many a 3 a.m. up watching YouTube recommended instead of doing my essay. My friends, again, that is AI. A AI is not some, yes, you know, there's a lot we don't know about it. As a classicist, trust me, I, I know that. It's such a big part of our lives. And it's not, I think it's what I'm saying. It's not some, you know, it's not just some brave unknown. It, it is a known that it's such, it's become so much our normal that to just, as I, I suppose Sultan would want us to do, or any of these other very fine speakers, just throw it out as some threat. That's not practical. That's not practical. We can't do that without radically altering the way we live. And finally, finally, as I mentioned very briefly, and I shall hopefully expand on, as the gentleman so gracefully asked me, um, yes, AI is not perfect. There's a lot we don't know about it. It will change tremendously in the next few years. You know, I allegedly do Latin and Greek. I, I can't tell you how. Uh, these guys may be, but not me. Yes, it's not perfect. But there is a wide, wide gulf between having issues and being an existential threat. And to, when, when you vote, when you walk through those doors, you don't have to think AI is great. You don't even have to think it's the best thing ever. You just have to think, it's not Ultron or Thanos or some Dune-esque you know, machine trying to kill you, it, as in not an existential threat. And with that, I commend this motion to the House. Thank you very much.